notification and wait for it and we are live i want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of off the record on the people's podcast this evening we have a great guest uh, one who we look forward to getting some information from as well as inspiration and that is brother kamal muhammad first of all assalamu alaikum sir alaikum salam brother joshua yes sir this is an extreme honor uh thank you you for taking time out of your busy schedule to have a conversation with us. Um, the, the first question I want to know is, what was it like growing up for you, you know, prior to 75? Thank you, Brother Joshua. First, I want to thank you and your audience for having me here. You know, it's, an, it's my honor to see you, and who I saw grow up, become such a, 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 a great man, you know. Very I love seeing that, so I thank you. And uh, I also have to thank, of course, as, as a member of the Nation of Islam, I want to thank Allah who came into person of Master Farah Muhammad. And I thank him for raising amongst us, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, my father. Yes, and sir. And yes, I thank him for leaving us such a wonderful teacher and guide in Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Greet you all in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum salam, sir. So, what was it like growing up? Was that the question? Growing yes, up? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Elijah Muhammad? Well, it was, when I look at it now, uh, Brother Joshua, it was definitely a strange way to grow up. But when I was growing up, it was all I knew. So it didn't bother me. You know, I, I didn't have my father around most of the time. You know, of course, like my other brothers and, and have told you, you know, we didn't play. <laughs> and even the minister's children said, we didn't play football with our dads. Yes, didn't sir. play baseball with them. You know, my father was not home with me every night. You know, I, I might literally sometimes see him only a couple of times a year you know but that was like natural to me i didn't see i didn't feel bad about it i didn't feel um left out i i, I had to keep my father's secret at that time because I, i'm the oldest uh son from the second set you know mm. so um at that time i mean i was born at the time when malcolm was a problem brother malcolm was a problem and you know, at that time, it really was a very difficult time uh, to be one of my father's children from other than uh, Mother Claire Muhammad because yes, they were using that as a weapon against him. And I'm actually old enough to remember uh, calls from Malcolm to my mother, brother Malcolm to my mother and things like that, you know. So mm. um, that's the only thing that was slightly difficult that we had to keep my father's relationship to a secret. I mean, if you can imagine going to the mosque, the first thing they ask you is, who is your father? You yes, know? sir, yes, sir. <laughs> and you can't really answer that. So I had several instances where that was a little difficulty and I knew the other brother, Sharif, who was mm -hmm. the Supreme Captain at the time. And several times he had to come up and help me because uh, the people, the brothers on security were like trying to figure who's this young man who, <laughs> <laughs> says he's a Muslim, you know, he gives the greetings and everything, but we don't know who his father is, you know, yes, sir. so it was, it was difficult in that respect, but I, I mean, it really, I didn't see it as that big a problem, so I can say that my life was blessed, really. Praise be to Allah. Now, when you said that Malcolm X would um, call, you the, call the house, what, how, how was that when you, when you were hearing this and seeing this? Well, you know, that's a very difficult um, aspect of the, the life of um, my mother and my, my father and, and the nation, you know, that was a very difficult time. Um, Brother Malcolm at that time was trying to recruit people. I don't, I don't really want to go into a lot of details about it, but yes, sir. yeah, he was trying to recruit people to help him. And I do remember that. Yes, sir. Okay. And when you said that uh, Raymond Sharif was the Supreme Captain at the time, what would he say to to get you in places during that time period? <laughs> well, as you know, as a, as the son of, uh, of a former nas uh, national Supreme Captain, you know, you know that when the Supreme Captain comes along, everyone just backs backs away. So he would, <laughs> he would come along and they and he would, I would see him and give him the greetings, he return the greetings to me and immediately they say, oh, you know, the Supreme Captain, okay, go on in brother. Mm -hmm. And then he would take me in, take me downstairs, you know, and, and I would sign in and that kind of thing, but yeah. Once, once they knew that he knew me, it was not a problem. Praise be to Allah. 
Yes, sir. And my sisters, Miriam and Naima, both send the greetings. And people are sending you a little love on Facebook as well. Oh, wow. Uh, Alaikum salam to your sisters. And I love everyone who's sending love to me and even those that are not online. I love my brothers and sisters. Praise be to Allah. Now, did your, um, did your father ever, um, what did he wear when he was around you? Was he always in suits? Did he ever like, y'all just make jokes? I never saw my father in anything but a suit. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. All, all the time I saw him, he had a suit. No, no, I, I second thought, a couple of times I did see him uh, in his later years uh, when he was slightly ill, I saw him sometimes in bed, you know. Mm. But other than that, he was always in a suit, yes. And yes, he was, he was, um, I, I can't say he was, to me, he was not a joking kind of person. He was um, humorous, but I can't say it was, he was actually a jokester or anything, but he was humorous and uh, always wanted to try to guide me. Uh, every time we were together, he was trying to guide me because I was his son and he wanted to, of course, as most fathers wanted to guide me in a way that, that he wanted to see. And um, my mother and I, he had some, li literally had some uh, disagreements on that because he wanted to have me live with him according to what my mother said. Mm. And my mother said, well, no, I don't want that. And she was a little, I can't say, she was very protective over me. Yes, sir, and yes, sir. she would, she didn't trust people around him and that kind of thing. And so she was like, no, I tell you what, let me raise him till he's 13 and then you can have him. And according mm. to her, he agreed to that. So um, yeah. that's basically how it went. So no, he, I, I think he was mainly trying to make sure since he was not around me as much that I, uh, I turned out to be uh, um, a young man that was respectful. He, he always wanted me respectful to my mother. Yes, sir. Uh, he, he wanted me to study and, uh, and just be a, a, a good Muslim young man. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. And when you were younger, did you believe that he was the messenger of Allah or did you see him more as just your dad? Well, I think most of my brothers have probably said the same kind of thing. Our mothers were very, very uh, strong believers. I mean, they, they, they came as a nation in their early 20s. And I mean, the messenger of Allah was the messenger of Allah. <laughs> So, I mean, I mean, hey, you know, I, I'm a kid. I'm maybe, yes, I don't care. I mean, even when I was like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, you know, if I had a question and I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a kid, I'm a young man, I'm going to question certain things. And I happen to be kind of studied in the world. You know, I, I didn't go to Muhammad University, believe it or not. Mm. I, I went, I went to, to regular school and I did very well in school. I skipped the uh, the uh, fifth grade. And then when I got into the sixth grade, they wanted to skip me to the eighth grade, you know? Mm. So of course I got a little big head and thought I was kind of smart. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I would, I would, I would, I, and then at a young age, I read the Supreme Wisdom and read my father's books at a very young age. I'm talking before even 10. And uh, mm. I would read things and certain things didn't seem to match with what I was learning in school. So I would ask my mom, I said, mom, this doesn't make sense here. Mm. And, you know, for example, I'll give you a perfect example of one that, that, that I even told this to the minister one time. I was reading the How to Eat to Live, and you know how he describes uh, eating uh, more than one meal a day is like burn, you know, uh, running your stomach out and burning your stomach out and wearing it out, rather, I should say, wearing your stomach out. Yes, sir. And, and I said, well, you know, I understand that, but how does wearing out your stomach cause you to get lines and wrinkles in your face? Mm. I said, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, Ma. And she said, well, son, this is the, going, going back to your question. She said, well, son, I don't know the answer to that. Mm. But I'll tell you this. Your father is the messenger of Allah. And what he says, if he says, especially if he says, Master Farah told him that is the, God's <laughs> only truth. And so I don't know about it, but I'll tell you this. One day you will find out about it. Mm. Mm. And the funny thing about it, Brother Joshua, is I used to get this magazine delivered to my house. It was called Science News. Mm. And I, I had to be no more than, I, I must have been in the sixth grade at that time. About a month later, this magazine came to my house, Science News, and an article was in there about longevity, living longer than you're supposed to as a human being. Mm -hmm. And they had a, a literal test in there that they had done with rats 
feeding them uh, various amounts of food. And of mm. course, it verified that feeding the, the rats less increased their lifespan. And it, mm. it was a whole big article. It came literally a month after I asked my mother that question. <laughs> And while. I tell you, brother, I said, well, I went to my mom with the, with the article. I said, mom, you were absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that's a little funny story about that. That, uh, that I, but over the years, if, if you all, and I'm speaking to our audience right now, when you come to these questions and you question in your heart, but don't question with an arrogance or with a, um, with, the, the the current knowledge that you have blocking knowledge that is coming to you you will get an answer from a source i don't know where it will come from but you will get an answer that will verify what you're being taught in the lessons now, many of you may have if you look around you'll see that even lately i'm, I'm talking about the last five six years they started finally admitting that the white man hasn't even been on the planet for more than six six thousand years yes sir they they verified that genetically they don't talk about it a lot, but if you look it up, you'll find it. Beautiful. Praise be to God. And welcome to my Teresa Pearl. And thank you all for continuing to watch. And thank you, our brother Kamal, for your transparency and your sacrifice and the sacrifice of your family. My next question for you is, can you give us uh, a story about your mother, um, you know, growing up? How was she as a mother? My mother was very loving, very protective but uh, very giving. I mean, I, like I said, I grew up, I didn't have any brothers and sisters. Uh, my mother, um, I, many of you have seen her and she's a very down to earth woman. Yes, sir. She, she grew up in Alt Gale Gardens. Uh, that's where her family grew up. But she graduated from high school and joined the nation. And she always told, tells me, and it sounds kind of like my father too, she always tells me, Son, I grew up in Algale Garden. I wouldn't have been anything if I had not met your father and, and joined the nation. Mm. Now, after she met my father, yes, she became a nurse. She went to school and became a nurse, registered nurse. Yes, sir. She opened her own, she actually opened up two businesses while I was uh, uh, living with her. She had a daycare center and she had a uh, fast food stand. Mm. And mm. Uh, I mean, she was, she was successful. Uh, as a nurse, successful as a business owner. And uh, I really admire that about my mother. But even beyond the business sense, I got my businesses from her. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Be, beyond the business sense, um, she was a very giving person. Like I said, she raised my cousins, but th those aren't the only cousins she raised. I had about three other cousins that lived with me when I was younger that were older than these other cousins. But when I was a young child, maybe about... Uh, six or seven, I had uh, three other cousins that lived with me. They mm. were a little older than me and they stayed with us and went, went, to, uh, uh, went to school with us and graduated from high school and then lived, moved out on their own and all of them are successful in life now. So I really do think my mother is, is a mother of the faithful because she has definitely raised uh, a lot of uh, people in, in my family. And, and from the daycare center, I hear people to this day reminding me of how they went to her daycare center and, and grew up and became successful people. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Beautiful. My next question is, um, once the Muslim Elijah Muhammad departed, um, how did that impact you personally? And what did you do? Yes, that's a hard question. Uh, well, it, I was in school at that time. I was going to the... Um, University of Chicago lab school in high school. And um, I mean, it was shocking. And what was more shocking than anything, especially here in Chicago, was seeing how quickly Muslims seem to throw their beliefs away. Mm. That was the shocking thing. And um, of course, I went a little crazy too. <laughs> no, don't, don't, think that, don't think that I was, I was a, a, a prime example of a Muslim, but yes, I, 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 I never really could, could, could go with what my older brother, Warthadine, was, was teaching. I never, I, never, I never threw away the beliefs. 
I might have thrown away my practices a little bit. But, yes, sir. But the beliefs I always held on to. So, but that was the shocking part, just seeing how, um, and then some believers literally lost their minds over that that battle, you know. And yes, sir. I saw that, you know. So that was it was a very rough time. Yes, sir. And speaking of the you, you seeing the believers lose their mind during that time, how can we, in the most time, it's Farquhar saying that he's going to leave soon. How can we uh, try to beat that, repeating that history based off of what you've seen? Well, the important thing is to remember what he taught and hold on to what he taught. We have his books, we have his lectures, we have him talking about the fact that he will go away. You know, and he's talked said that to all of us. My father talked about it maybe to just a few people, mm. but uh, the ministers talked about it to all of us. And the like I said, the main thing is keep on to those core, hold on to those core beliefs tightly. You'll know when someone comes and tries to take you off that path. Yes, sir. Avoid that. That's that's my best advice. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. And. For those who may not know, you married uh, the most high missiles for Archon's daughter. How how did you handle that as far as the pressure of doing that? Well, um, I think I put more pressure on myself than than any other pressure was there. I mean, mm. um, um, I was blessed that the minister really, uh, of course, he loves my father. Yes, sir. And so my father had always said to him that he wanted our families to join together. So literally I, I felt no, no negative things at all. If anything, it was more of a, a, a welcoming. Uh, and um, when I, I don't know, he might not even want me to say this, but when, when I did ask for his daughter's hand in marriage, he, he was so happy that a, a few little, tears came to his eyes and I was mm -hmm. really amazed you know but like I said I felt more welcome than anything in my life and it and it this is another important thing it brought me a father mm -hmm. be, be, because I did not grow up with my father and to to have someone now that I could discuss things with and could give me advice even before we got married he gave me some very important advice uh concerning um my fiance, his, his, his daughter, who I was courting, gave yes, me some very important advice. And I felt so much like a father giving a son advice that I didn't really have growing up. So I, I, I don't know if I answered your question, but that's- Oh, you absolutely did. Okay. You absolutely did. Yes, sir. And what made you see the minister? There were many ministers uh, prior to 75 that you, you know, I'm sure you saw. What made the most I miss Louis Farrakhan stand out to you to follow him after prior to 75? Okay, um, I think I, you know, I really didn't see uh, Minister Farrakhan much when I was young. Um, mm -hmm. I'd heard of, of him, but I didn't see him that much. My mother always talked about him, you know, because, you know, uh, she knew him, of course, but my mother, uh, but I didn't, didn't see him. I saw him one time, he was speaking in Atlanta, I think it must have been late 70s, and I, I went with my brother Abdullah uh, and he took me to meet him. Uh, he already knew Abdullah. And uh, I met him in his hotel room. Brother Jabril was there also. Mm -hmm. And I met them both at the same time. And this is going to sound kind of strange, <laughs> but I looked at them and they looked like two of the most beautiful men I ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. It was like they glowed, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it was just a play. They greeted me very warmly, you know. They knew who I was. They knew my mother. And, uh, you know, we left. Then the next time, I, you know, I was in school at this time. I was in college. So I was going back and forth out of the, out of the city and that kind of thing. So the next time I saw him was back in the 80s. Mm. And uh, it was at a fundraiser. And I listened to him. And it was actually really the first time that I ever heard him get a, give a lecture. And mm. when he did... I, I felt my father. I mean, everything that he said was was my father, and that was all I needed. I went up to him. He was it, it was uh, donation time. I went up to him. I greeted him. I pulled out all the money out of my pocket, 
And this is another <laughs> funny thing. I didn't have much money at that time. I had some coins. And I apologized to him. I gave him my coins. I said, listen, I'm sorry I didn't have more money on me. You know, I didn't know that this was a fundraiser, but I gave him what I had. And later he laughed and he told me, that's the same thing your father did with Master Farad. <laughs> mm, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yes, I said, sir. oh, boy. But yes, that's, that's, that's what it was. It was just, I felt my father when I, was, when I heard him talk. I literally, uh, everything that he said was in line with my father. And, and I never had heard that from any other man. That's beautiful. Praise me to a lot. Okay. And speaking of your education, could you inform us of your, how you matriculated through uh, higher education and being early dealing with the stock market. Can you just tell us about your education, sir? Yes, sir. Well, I, I graduated from the University of Chicago Lab School here in Chicago, and I, I matriculated into uh, Dartmouth uh, College in New Hampshire's um, Ivy League, which I really shouldn't have gone there, but mm -hmm. I was a fool. I was 17 years old and decided that I didn't need to study as much as I should at an Ivy League school. So mm -hmm. I, I lost my scholarship. I had a full scholarship, lost my scholarship. Then I was kind of, you know, I could, I could either say I was foolish or I could say I was guided because mm -hmm. I wouldn't be where I am today if I had stayed there. Because rather than go back there, I was a little arrogant. I said, I don't want to go back there. They took my scholarship away. They said they'll <laughs> give it back. You know, I said, I'm not going back there. And I, I, I uh, applied to Loyola. So I, I graduated, studied biology, graduated at Loyola University in Chicago. I was going to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. But then I, I had always been involved in finance. So I, I got a seat on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, exchange and traded uh, futures, traded uh, currencies, and the, the uh, Standard & Poor's 500 index and other things. Um, and then from that, I became a stockbroker and investment banker, worked at uh, several uh, brokerage firms here in the Chicago area, and uh, reached the point where I was a vice president in, at one of the firms. Mm. Uh, so, you know, I, I was doing okay. And then I was going to form my own firm. Mm. Uh, and at that point is when I started courting my wife, we got married, and then the minister asked me to join the Nation of Islam, and I couldn't say no. I'm not joining the Nation of Islam, but become the National Secretary, and I couldn't say no. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Uh, a lot of people saying beautiful, welcome Salam family, I see you all's comments. Thank you, sending their love to you, sir. They're saying happy Father's Day to you. Praise be to Allah, beautiful, thank you. Uh, Brother Kamal, we just, I just want to have a quick commercial break to uh, announce my sponsors of this week's podcast because we want to come right back to our brother and his teaching. My sister Miriam has a children's book and a coloring book, ABC I Love Me. Thank you very much, sister Miriam. My brother Rashad and his business partner Jamal Street Premier, they have a, um, a 4K drone and they shoot videos and they do editing and they're working on film. So I'm um, thank you for, very much for you all sponsorship. My sister Naima, stay on point. Dance Academy, LLC. She's teaching ballet virtually. Um, reach out to her. Thank you very much. Supreme Men's Clothing in St. Louis, Missouri. 10835 West Florissant Avenue. The phone number is 314-528-555. BMW Entertainment, our brother Ronald in Phoenix. They do event planning all around the country. Reach out to him. Brother Kenneth, Bowtie um, Maker Extraordinaire, 917-337-1380. He'll ship the bow ties to you anywhere in the country. Supreme Team Insurance from Brother Todd X McGraw. Thank you, sir. 803-521-2787. Also, Sister Shelly Hassan. That's Exodus, a new way of life. Creditrestoration.com. If you need your credit redone, reach out to our sister. Brother Chantel X, the X Factor in Transportation and Logistics. They do freight. They specialize in freight and trucking. Reach out to them if you need something uh, moved like that. Sister Serena Woodford in Fort Lauderdale, designsofcomposure.com, hollytextured.com. They do natural hair and skin products. Um, standing on the pentagram and needles, a boy's journey from a difference, uh, indifferent to making a difference. It is on Amazon. That's our brother, brother Jason Ali. I'm coming right back to you, sir. And Sister Tia, Raising Black Millionaires. She has flashcards. Thank you very much for teaching economic empowerment and development. My second book, which is a coloring book, Cleopatra with the K, which is on Amazon. And last but not least, my father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, abdusharif.com. Thank you all very much for your sponsorship. Uh, dollar sign, the People's Podcast. And thank you all for helping us keep going. Okay, right back to you, Brother Kamal. My next question for you, sir, is once you became the National Secretary, what was some of what was some of your greatest trials as a national secretary? Uh, I would say my greatest trials 
Boy, I, I can't, I went through a lot of trials, brother uh, mm. Joshua, and I'm sure your father's talked about it uh, as well. But when I became national secretary, I, I, I replaced brother Rodney, brother student minister Rodney, who was now, as you know, uh, student minister. And uh, he was the national secretary at that time. And brother Wazir was the national accountant. Mm. Um, mm. That first year as national secretary, um, brother um, Wazir uh, passed, and uh, it was a very trying time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I, I mean, basically, I was not an accountant. I was um, a business man, business oriented, and so brother Wazir was was my right hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, the nation definitely needed an accountant more than more than a businessman at the time because we were, you know, we were we were struggling. It, it was a, you know, the nation was was building and growing, but we were struggling. Um, I came with an idea for the for the minister to to um, have some debt consolidation and and get some funding from from some banks, and and that was successful. But, um, and Brother Wazir helped me bring that idea to him. And that was one of the reasons why, why he asked me to become national secretary. But mm. then as we're in the midst of all this and, and, and recovering, we, we lose my, my brother Wazir. So that was a, a very trying time, but we, a lot sends you help. And, you know, we had our great sister, Wendy, who is a great business woman now. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, but sir. She, she became our accountant and we had sister Aletha who came along and sister, sister, uh, Kamar, who was Sister Terry at that time, Sister Kamar, who was still with the, with the nation. So, I mean, Allah sent even more help, but it was a very trying time, yes. Hmm. yes and I, that was the most. Now, of course, we had the Million Man March and other things like <laughs> that, which almost killed me, but, but that was trying. And we want to stay right there on the Million Man March. What was it like um, to deal with that? What was it like leading up to the Million Man March for you as a National Secretary, and how did it impact you, sir? Well, uh, leading up to the Million Man March, we had the men's only meetings, as you, you probably remember. Uh, mm -hmm. Your father was very much involved in that. And uh, then we had the Million Man March. And just, the I, I think, well, I'm not going to say everybody, but I, I certainly did not understand how we were going to do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm looking at, at the finances of the nation. I'm looking at a million, bringing a million men to Washington <laughs> D.C. and I'm, 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 you know, the minister said do it, so we're trying to do it. But I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm rubbing my head, like, how are we going to do this? You know? Yes, sir. And uh, you know, but we pulled together. I mean, we were, we were a team. Me, your father, brother Ishmael, you know, brother, brother Arf, brother. I mean, everybody. We just all came together, the entire nation, you know, to get make this happen. And uh, mm -hmm. it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful event. But um, there were several times along the way, my end, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm the one that put together the, the uh, funding and, and dealt with the, uh, the jumbotrons, the, the, all of mm -hmm. the, the, um, mm -hmm. the sound equipment, all of the, the, uh, the tenting and, and tables for the vendors, and also raise money from the, uh, the LOCs, the local organizing committee. So it was okay. a lot. You know, it was a lot. And, and of course, I got to thank my brother Fontaine Muhammad for helping me yes, on that end. Brother Derrickson the, the, was the secretary in, in Washington, D.C. at that time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, I couldn't have done it without them, you know. So, I, I, and Brother R, for our attorney, you know, Brother yes, Leonard sir. helped on, on a lot of issues uh, having to do with the, the, um, the legal matters. So, I mean, it was, it was a very hard time, but we made it through. You know? Praise be to Allah. Okay. And I have a question. When you said, like, it was, you didn't know how it was going to happen. How do you, how did you, or, or did you ever go to the minister, say, minister, you're coming from a spiritual standpoint. I'm coming more dealing with the finances. And did he ever take your advice on when you came with something dealing with strictly numbers? Hmm. I mean, several times I, I've come to me, I, I wouldn't say at the Million Man March, uh, <laughs> but, but, but no, I mean, on that issue, we, we recognize, we recognize that we were being led by the spirit, you know? Yes, and so we, we, even though we didn't see it, we had to try our best to make it happen. You know, Crazy uh, the, the worst situation I had then 
<laughs> was uh, we I had a deadline to get some money in to to get these jumbotrons in, which we definitely needed. The minister definitely wanted it. I was saying, well, maybe we can't maybe we can't get these jumbotrons. Let's not let's not get as many as that. But he said, no, I want them. So I'm trying to get these in. They had to be shipped at a certain date to reach Washington DC at the time. And the, the, the guy was pressing me about getting the money in. We didn't have it. I asked the minister if I could pull it from the final call. Called him up one day at his house. He was tired. Uh, that's the other thing. When the minister wasn't in, in the best of health at that time either. Mm, mm, mm. And he was pushing through and working like I haven't seen anybody work before. Mm. And he was tired, his voice was, was hoarse. And I asked him if we could pull some money from the final call. Brother Joshua, I don't know, but your father certainly knows about this. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden, that hoarse voice went away. And the strength came, mm -hmm. came in that voice, brother. And he told me, boy, he uh, literally for about, I'm standing on the mall with my phone to my ear. Yes, sir. And literally for about 10 minutes, he's chewing me out, brother. Mm -hmm. Telling me how we're not going to ruin the final call. This march will be over, everybody will be gone, but the final call has to be here. Mm, mm. And of course I understood that, but I'm thinking, well, what are we gonna do? And <laughs> at the time, I'm actually actually almost ready to give up, Brother Joshua. Mm. I'm literally ready to give up because I'm tired, I'm, I, I, I'm working my, my butt off, and then I, 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 I'm asked for advice and I get chewed, off for, chewed up for seven minutes, 10 minutes, but the minister's so beautiful, man. This is what he did. After that chew out, <laughs> then he raised me up. He said, brother, Allah brought you here for this. You can do this. Mm, he said, brother, mm. I have full confidence in you. Yes, sir. Yes, You're sir. You're going to make this happen. You, you, it's going to happen. Just do it. And when he told me that, my spirit lifted. I said, okay, we're going to figure it out. I made some phone calls. The result is yes, we raised the money. We got it. I didn't have to go to the final call. So, so I mean, yeah. I hope I answered your question with that. I guess absolutely. I tracked a little bit. No, no, absolutely. Um, speak. So after the meeting in March, is success by the grace of God. Praise be to Allah. Be, leading in your entire life, have have you ever been faced with a sense of fear, a situation of fear, and if so, how have you overcome that? That's a hard question, Brother Joshua, because I'm one thing that you, you, your father can tell you and a lot of the national laborers that work with me, I'm not an emotional person. Yes, sir. So I, I can't say that I've ever had real, real, real fear. I don't, I mean, I, 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 I remember as a child, I, I tell my sons this story. Uh, these, these brothers about 10 brothers tried to rob my bike bicycle from me. I had this fancy new bicycle. <laughs> yes, sir. And these brothers came up. There was like five of them riding double on each bike and surrounded me. And my two other friends, my two other friends, they, they came to my bike and surrounded it because it was the newest one. My two friends ran away mm, mm. and left me. That was not, that was a, a learning experience, but they left me. <laughs> yes, sir. And, uh, I was with these 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 uh, brothers trying to ride my bike, and and you know they were like, it, they were like, listen, if we want to take your bike, we'll, we'll take it. And they pulled up their shirts; they had knives in their in their uh, pants and whatnot. But I wasn't afraid. I don't know why, but I, I I don't know why. And and I think that the fact that I wasn't afraid of them caused them to check themselves, and they were like, well, why is this brother not afraid of us? <laughs> and they ended up letting me go. You know, I didn't even have to fight. Yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. So, but but I, that's an example, I guess. I mean, I've been through some 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 situations that were dangerous, but I, I can't say I actually feared. I don't. Maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. Yeah. My yes, wife sir. says I'm crazy. She she, does. <laughs> she she says I'm crazy. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, and I'm speaking of your wife. What advice would you give to future husbands? Oh, brother. Nah, I don't know. Uh, I've been married for thirty years to my beautiful wife and, you know, I can't say it's, it's been all, all roses. I mean, we've had, you're gonna have problems, you know, you're gonna have uh, uh, difficulties, uh, but as the minister tells us, keep God uh, 
at the heart of your, your marriage, at the root of your marriage. And as long as your, your wife uh, sees that you are trying to uphold your righteousness, then she will, I think, go with you. And I think that's what my wife, uh, by the grace of Allah, recognizes in me. She sees that I'm trying to improve myself. I'm trying to be a good Muslim. I'm trying to be a good man to her. I'm trying to be good to our people. And uh, I think that's what helps. So, as, and we work together, you know? Yes, okay, beautiful. Uh, what advice would you give to future fathers? Uh, well, I guess it's the same thing. I, I have two sons. I don't have a daughter. I thank God I don't have a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I would not know how to raise a daughter. You know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, but uh, I mean, I, 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 now that I have two sons that have grown almost, I mean, I really do miss having a daughter. But at, a, at my younger age, I don't know how I would have raised a daughter because I would have been so ridiculous, so protective, so ridiculous. Yes, sir. Yes, and, you sir. Know, but um, uh, to raise my sons, I basically wanted to teach them to be, be uh, responsible men, you know, uh, to recognize their value as black men that you are not the bottom, you know, what we're, what we're taught in them, you're not the bottom of society. Yes, you're sir. the cream of society. Yes, and sir. I try to instill them and I think I did a good job with that, you know, and I try to make them strive to be the best that they can be and recognize that they can be better than anything that they know out here, you know, better mm -hmm. than me, better than, I mean, I, my, my youngest son is very intelligent uh, and I tell him, you know, and I tell my oldest son the same thing. Don't think that just because you have these guys like Einstein or whatever who are considered to be so bright and so intelligent that you can't do better than them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, you you come from from the stock of God, so you can be whatever you want to be. Don't think that that everything that that is out there now is is uh, is all there is to learn. There's much more. There's a whole universe out there to learn. Yes, sir. Uh, you will find that that Einstein's theory is not complete. You can do better than that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So just try to, I would say, just try to tell your children that they can be, not that they can be, that they are great, you know, and strive to always be that way. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. What has been your greatest joy uh, in, in your life so far? Well, my greatest joy, I would say, is is the, the birth and raising of my children. I would say that's my greatest joy, it really Crazy. is. Yes, sir. And what do you do for fun besides ducking, trying to play against me in chess for all these years? <laughs> <laughs> now, Brother Joshua, you know, one day I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to teach you, teach, teach you some lessons here. But yes, yes I do, sir. I do play chess and uh, I've had to, I've had to humble a few people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I like reading. I, I, I do um, I do enjoy um, um, I used to enjoy sports, but I, 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 I <laughs> I'm getting a little old for that now. But, yes, but, but I, I used to play basketball and, and okay, uh, I know okay, yeah, oh yeah, I used to be a basketball player. Most people think that I'm just a bookworm, but I was I was an athlete. <laughs> I, I, you know, I did track and basketball. Um, mm. But uh, I, I enjoy, um, um, you know, I enjoy sports and watching it now. I enjoy uh, exactly. a, a good movie here and there. And, and uh, you know, I, like I said, I do chess. And I, lately I've been enjoying uh, dabbling around, around in the stock market again. So okay. that's helpful. Praise be to Allah. Will you ever write a book on your personal life? Um, if I wrote a book, it would probably be more on my father and the nation, you know, mm, mm. And, and, and maybe my father-in-law, although I think other people could probably do a better job at that. But yeah, I, I don't know if I would write a book on myself, but I, I would probably write a book more on my father and, and what I, I think has been missed about his, uh, his, his, uh, his teachings and his legacy. Praise be to God. Is, speaking of that, is there something that you can share with us um, that you think we should know that has been missed? Well, I don't think any of us on, on this uh, 
in this form miss anything. Yes, but yes, I think the majority of our people in and our people in America now don't realize that their whole stance on life right now is based on on things that uh, my father and 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 the minister uh, taught. I mean, when I was growing up, yeah. You know, I mean, right now we go around and we say I'm a black man like that's nothing. But when I was growing up, and when your father was growing up, that was an insult. Yes, sir. You know, call somebody black that was an insult. You know, say that uh, uh, your hair should should be natural, you'd be laughed at. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but but these kind of things came from the Nation of Islam that they were preaching back in the 1930s. So yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. And, and and if you look at all the things that that we as black people take pride in, you know, hip hop movement, all of this. That, yes, sir. That, that's outgrowth of the Nation of Islam. Yes, sir. Yes, you know? sir. So I just think that there's a whole generation of people that don't realize that they take this 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 knowledge and stance that they have and they don't realize where it came from. You know, even the fact, you know, <laughs> you, you all think this is funny, I'm sure, but you, you've heard a lot. When we were growing up, everybody thought Egypt was white people, you know, mm, and yes, black sir. people never did anything. But now that. They're starting even teaching school that Egyptians were black, Sumerians were black, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, that's the kind of thing I think that needs to be taught where, where that root came from. Where did it come from? Let's give knowledge, acknowledgement and, and thanks to the person who, who, who pushed that idea and that, that ideology, you know? You gotta about? give credit where it's due. Yes, sir. How, what advice would you give to the future generations on holding on to their faith been like 10 toes down to sustain like have you done for all these years well you know it, it is it is hard i mean because society it has a strong pull on you you know but the best thing to do for muslims the, and the thing that helps me was the fact that I, I worked at the nation of islam i lived at the nation of islam almost you know and you my friends were all muslims you know so you've got to surround yourself with people of like mind, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that will help because, you know, if you start getting off, off track, which will happen, you start walking off the path, your friend will pull you back and say, Hey, you know, well, come on, come on now. What you doing, man? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. So that, that's my advice. Stick with your, with your, with your family, your friends, your brothers in, in Islam. And uh, they will help you. Not, that doesn't mean you don't have friends that are that are outside the nation, but make your make your stronghold be people that think and, and live like you. Yes, sir. And brother, come on, one more question. And thank you all, because a lot of people are liking it and giving you uh, compliments and greetings and love as well. What um, do you want your legacy to be, sir? Hmm. Just that I was a, a good Muslim and that I try my best to make the nation successful. Yes, sir. That, that's all I need. <laughs> Praise me to Allah. Well, I wanna make sure that I thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule. And on behalf of myself, my family and the viewing audience, we thank you for your sacrifice, the sacrifice of your families. Um, and just for, ever since for people who may not know, ever since I've known you, I mean, you've known me longer than I've, you know, of course you watched me grow up, but you've always been kind. I would have never known if my parents had said, you know, the messengers is that, you know, I would have never, because you just, it's like, somebody like Josh was going, like you walking around the mosque and the property and just the most humble person, you know, one of the most humble people I've ever met and kind. So I thank you for your humility and, you know, just being your genuine spirit, sir. Oh, thank you, brother Joshua. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure watching you grow up. And I just want to say this, you have injured me, brother. Yeah, you didn't I, 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 ask me to. You did not ask me to be a sponsor. Oh, okay, okay. Would you? Would you be a sponsor? <laughs> well, I would absolutely ask. I didn't know. I, I, I yes, sir. I absolutely ask you to be a sponsor, sir. I would love to be a sponsor. You know, I, I have a company that that is investing in Detroit. So, the Detroit Mecca Project. Yes, I'd love to be a sponsor for your program. Okay, yes, sir. I will text you the cash app, and we will make sure we promote it. For, you know, every month. You know, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and love you, brother Kamal, and thank you all for watching. Love you too, brother. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam.